Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about flying in long thermal streets. As a friend called it, it's a magic carpet ride made of steel. Well, for us really maybe just fiberglass and plastic. <laughs> now here's the image. You'll see that red line and see those clouds? It kind of looks like a street and many times we can fly in these streets and find lift. One of the cool things about finding these is you can fly continuously not even have to circle. A friend of mine flew over a hundred miles, never stopping to circle in a thermal. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Most of my followers know that I purchased an ASW-20B model. It's a glider that's loved by all that fly it. It's an amazing machine. It's been around since 1983. The glide ratio is 40 to one, has a 50 foot wingspan, Maximum weight is about 1,100 pounds. In cruise, I can fly between, say, 60 and about 110 miles per hour indicated. All right, coming up on this next image, I'll be providing you real-time flight information. I'm using a built-in GPS data logger and add it to this video to show you real-time flight. The yellow squiggly line that you'll see up the top left is my actual flight, and it's to scale. I flew about 150 miles in about three hours. All right, let's get ready for takeoff. On takeoff, I'm in negative flap one setting, and then you just saw my hand move on the left. I'm in zero flap now, accelerating, get off the ground, keep it on the deck. During tow, you have to stay absolutely focused, no distractions whatsoever. You've got to keep your eyes on that tow plane. You'll go through a lot of training on what to do, especially if that tow line breaks or fails. One thing that was pretty amazing to me initially when I first started flying was that you could turn around 180 degrees and land at only 200 feet above the ground. Pretty amazing, isn't it? For release, we want to clear the area, pull the release handle, make sure that the rope has released. You'll make a descending left-hand turn and I'll make a climbing right hand turn so we can move Landing apart as fast as possible. Now this flight was September 5th and it, was, it just turned out to be an exceptional day for flying cross country. Look at those beautiful cumulus clouds. Really a nice day. All right, coming up on this next clip, I'll be over Wachahatchee, Texas at about 7,000 feet. And I'm gonna toss out a little yellows balsa wood glider that I have. Okay, we're over the city of Wachahatchee at about 7,000 feet. I'm going to slow down here, pull the, pull the nose up, do a stall, and hopefully release it without breaking it. As we're flying along here, looks like I'm in a thermal as we proceed even higher. I'm going to push the nose down. There it is. Pick up a little speed. Bring the nose up. Slow down. Try to get it off that window without breaking it. There it goes. There it goes. 7,200. At this time, I'm fairly close to a Man, TSA a or home base. and. Got all this beautiful height energy, so I decided well, I'll make one more lap around the course, staying between the two highways that we use typically. And this is when I started noticing this thermal street, and I was thinking, hmm, I wonder how far I could go under that without turning. See that red line? See how those clouds look like a street? Well, typically there can be lift under those, and like I said before, a friend of mine flew 100 miles without ever turning in the thermal. And on this one, I actually had a gain of altitude at the end before I decided to turn around. Pretty cool. So when I encountered lift, 
I'm going to put it in what we call thermaling flat and I'm going to slow down in the lift as we climb. Now, the other side of it is there might be a lot of sink once you get out of that cloud, so you'd have to push the nose down to get away from that sink as fast as possible. But you'll see in this video, I had a, an actual gain from, I don't know, 6,000 to 7,000 and probably flew 15 miles. When a friend of mine told me he flew that 100 miles and he said it was like a magic carpet ride, I, I said, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I can get into one of these thermal streets and make a video on it. Very cool. If you look at that little red triangle around the yellow line, you'll see where I've moved further, further down. And this thermal street was a long ways out, but it was toward the end of the day and I wanted to make sure I get back to base okay and so I didn't I didn't go all the way until it stopped. But you'll see I've actually gained altitude. These thermal streets are over just one after the other. The line of uh, thermal streets. It's already 4 30 in the afternoon. Alright now that I've got all this hyped energy we're gonna go into final glide which simply means I don't need any additional thermal to make it back home to base. I'm gonna put the nose down we're gonna accelerate I'm going to put the flap setting at negative 2, and that'll allow me to fly the fastest, probably around 110 knots indicated. All right, I'm working my way down, and you notice that little red triangle. It's very close to TSA at this time. Okay, let's start a, a nice descent rate. Spoilers are open. Increase the sink rate. Working our way down to pattern altitude, which is about 800 feet above the ground. Landing gear is down and locked. Looking for traffic. Alright, bring in the spoilers a little bit. Okay, we're at pattern altitude. Looking for traffic. Looking good. hours and 30 minutes good day to be a bird well i hope you enjoyed this video and the next time you're looking up go oh that's what he's talking about i can see a thermal street you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the air next time bye bye